I've really used the arts as a way to cope, to heal, and to flourish. I grew up as a professional ballet dancer, started dancing when I was three years old, but my mom's a psychologist, and so I quickly went to college to become a psychologist. And very early on, even when I was in college, I started to be involved in integrating dance and psychology to help other people. And so I started a children's dance group and we performed for children who were in the hospital, who were in inner city schools and didn't have a lot of resources. What I've been doing really the past 30 years in my life, I'm a professor at Emory University and I work at Grady Hospital, which is an inner city hospital in Atlanta, Georgia. Lots of community trauma, but most of the people who we take care of at the hospital are African American. And so a long history of intergenerational trauma through slavery and structural racism, which is a huge problem, unfortunately, in our country as it is in many places in the world. And also because I work with people with psychiatric problems, Many of them also have a history of family intergenerational trauma in the form of childhood abuse and neglect and domestic violence or intimate partner violence. There are many connections between doing work on our own inner trauma and doing work on dealing with collective trauma and being social change agents. I think that for the women in our project, They've had a history of so much trauma and we provide so many groups and individual therapy, including groups that have expressive arts in them. So again, I integrate the arts and the, the trauma healing work um, with the goal of helping people to be engaged in their community, empowered to make a difference in the lives of others. But another part of it is working with the people who work with trauma survivors. Because whether or not they have a trauma history themselves, they experience what we call vicarious traumatization. I learned a lot about that through the pandemic, working in a hospital on the front lines with people taking care of people who are dying from COVID or very sick. And one of the things I did from the beginning of the pandemic was provide support, support groups, individual support, lots of different ways to help healthcare workers. We need to deal with our own struggles and conflicts and problems with self-esteem. Then we know that people burn out. We know that people stop being able to have the energy to do it. We're not as creative if we're not taking care inside. And so I think that we need to constantly strive to find a balance. That sometimes we just need to push pause and mind, you know, mind our inner world. That's why I know at this conference there's so much time on meditation and yoga, which is very much a very inward focused self-care. So there are a number of ways in which I enjoy bringing the arts. Um, for me, it's lots of dance and theater and music. I'm not very visually creative, but we incorporate that in the work we do. In the NEAR project I run, we have a weekly coping with trauma through art group. Women in the group in the program do art projects that are designed to help with various parts of their trauma healing. In another uh, group we have, which is a creative arts group, and that uses more movement and theater and poetry and other forms of arts, again, to help people deal with intergenerational trauma, with slavery, with structural racism, with histories of uh, experiencing child abuse, or being in a domestic violence relationship. Intergenerational trauma really has to do with people before us. I've realized for myself, having all four of my grandparents being from the Ukraine, and they left the Ukraine in the early 1900s because of the neg very bad experiences that Jewish people had there through the pogroms. Now with things happening, the war in the Ukraine right now, I recognize my desire to help people there and to provide wellness and support opportunities for people uh, in, on teams um, in the Ukraine or who have been displaced. One thing is just to notice, gee, I don't know why I did that. I don't know why I got irritable 
with that person. I don't know why I'm always fighting. And sort of when things don't make sense, those sort of puzzle pieces of our lives that don't make sense, I think it's really important to say, well, why do I have this piece of the puzzle? And one of the questions to ask oneself is, what does this have to do with my story? And as we turn over the pieces of our, the puzzle of our life, things fit together better. And when they fit together better, we have a greater sense of stability and serenity and calm. And I really think we have learned in doing all this diversity, equity, and inclusion work that the work is only important if it brings a sense of belonging. It is through that belonging, through that connection with other people, and that together when we feel like we belong, we want to have things be better. We want to reduce that discrepancy between how things are and how we believe they ought to be. And that is social change. Mm -hmm.